So let's make sure that we understand this. So these characters are allocated do by doing this. We capture the pointer to these characters. Then we pass the pointer, uh, this pointer to C out. C out finds the first character in memory, but doesn't stop there because anytime you give C out a pointer to a character, it will assume that you want to print a string of characters. And so therefore it prints the next character, the next, the next, the next, and eventually it finds the zero, ter zero terminating uh, character at the end of the string and it stops. And so as a result we print hello. Uh, on this line what we do is that we, we just pass a copy, uh, essentially the memory access by using index dereferences the pointer. And so this expression here is simply a reference to a character in memory. Not, uh, this is no longer a pointer to character. This, the type of this expression is character, char, because pointer gets dereferenced by index access to element uh, in memory. And so C out simply, so this, um, uh, what C out sees as the result of the second line is instead of saying p char, uh, it basically sees this. This is what C out sees uh, as the result of do us doing this. It simply prints one character because when p char is used uh, by using, uh, you know, this uh, index uh, uh, access to memory, uh, you get a single character, and that's what C out sees, and this is what it prints. It prints just a single character. And finally, when we create a string, right, um, when we create this string named S1, uh, it's a different story. It is an object of type string. It uses some internal memory storage, uh, and it contains the string, and we can modify individual characters inside the string, and it's a mutable, you know, manageable string. We can grow it, we can shrink it, and we can do some things with it. So that's the idea of a string, which is kind of, uh, you know, if you just need to print it, there is no reason to create a string. You can print this, that's not a problem. But if you need to work with text, search it, modify individual, you know, modify fragments of it, uh, uh, parse it in some way, uh, then uh, you can use the string class. So just to comment on this line, uh, the possibilities are. Uh, other, uh, so multiple constructors are available on the string. And um, uh, if I scroll this down, uh, you can do some tricks here with taking a string and specifying that you want the first four characters of it. Or you want to take another string and say, starting from position two, give me five characters, and so forth. Uh, so there is variety of this. And we're going to talk specifically about uh, different functionality of the string. It just gives you a variety of things that you can construct strings with, with many, different, uh, uh, many different parameters. And this is not the limitation of it. There is more. But uh, string class is pretty flexible and gives you flexibility in this department. So let's move to the next slide. Now, the string is the position and count system. For example, uh, right now, I have string 1, which contains this text, hello. right? So right now, at this point, my string contains this hello thing, right? Uh, it stores those individual characters and somehow manages memory. Uh, this, uh, uh, again, the, st the storage inside string class has nothing to do with C string. Nothing, absolutely nothing to do with that. Uh, this, uh, just like our stack, in stack of integers, can manage everything dynamically and statically and you know we've we've seen three different approaches to implement stack so string 
does that memory ma manipulation internally on individual characters. But we know that this is the content of our string as far as we can see it right now. So the demonstration of the position and count approach position and count uh, uh, principle. If you need to refer to parts of the string, for example, a fragment of the string, then you can say string one, string one take a substring, like part of it. And position and count will be, this will be the position and this is the count. <coughs> All right, so this is, this is how you work with this. So if I wanted to display a fragment of my string, just like, just like this, so I will define them as variables as opposed to just, uh, you know, numbers here. So that integer position could be position 1. And positions are counted 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, and so forth, right? Just like the positions are zero-based positions. So if this is position 1, it refers to character E in my hello string. And if I say integer count, integer count equals, I don't know, 2, it means uh, the substring should be uh, counted from character E, you know, the length of the substring is 2. So I'm expecting this to print EL, right, as a result. This is the demonstration of the position and count approach to manage uh, pieces of string, pieces of text encapsulated by the string object. So let's run this and find out if, if my assumption is correct. Okay, so there you go, EL, that's what gets printed, just to demonstrate it, right? So there is a special position defined inside the string class. Uh, it's called endpost, non-existing position. And it's simply actually defined as all ones in that uh, thing. Uh, those guys, uh, the, basically, uh, the approach to the position and count uh, system is also if I say string find el for example if I if I can do it by memory uh, we'll, we'll see so if I say uh, int uh, how about I already have a position so position equals uh, string one uh, find right find starting from zero, right? Starting from zero, uh, uh, find, um, you know what? Since I don't remember uh, the, the, the actual uh, method, uh, let me do it the way you would do it otherwise. Um, so if I say, um, I don't know, C++, dot com, right? This is a very popular reference and just type string in the uh, search box. It should find a very quickly find the string class and uh, in this uh, this actually finds us a string um, uh, string class and we have the members here and I was looking for find uh, so find if I click find uh, find there are many overloaded versions of find but I can be looking for a constant string and then specify the position all right so find uh, say let's find EL right uh, starting from position 0 so again this count and position uh, approach is used here so take string find this piece and start from zero. So I'm expecting pause to be set to uh, one because the string is there. So 
so pause and can say <coughs> position of EL. I can even print double quotes inside my string by escaping them like this. So pause and then just print the new line. Uh, print the new line. Uh, I need to keep adding those uh, stream out output operator. So this should be one. So position of EL is one. That's fine. All right. So it finds it. However, if um, I know E mm, M. I was looking for, this fragment is not found in my string, which contains hello, so there's no combination of characters em. In this case, um, you know, let me do it this way, uh, el, keep, leave that alone, and then position of em uh, is uh, em, and I will add space here, so so em will not be found and I'm expecting it but I will print the position anyway so the position is minus one and that is uh, the way uh, string design uh, is, is string approaches uh, its design is that if there is I need to indicate a non-existing position, uh, there is string and pause. So, for instance, here I could say uh, if, uh, if the pause here equals um, ooh, no, a string and pause, it's defined inside the string class, uh, then I can say see out uh, fragment fragment not found right uh, and I can print a new line in the end um, Otherwise, I can try to print the position just like I would normally do, right? So uh, this is how end position is used, right? So try to find something as an example, get the result, then check the result against end pulse. And uh, I should uh, expect this to be printed because that should be uh, the, the result of what we do. So build again. Uh, run it again. So fragment not found gets printed as a result. So, you know, not a very complicated demonstration. Let me just close all these windows that I don't need. Oh, and I'm way over. Ugh.